Well, I can start by saying that we're happy uh, to be here and for all the beautiful organization and uh, also for having the opportunity to present here today, of course. Uh, I have a colleague with me uh, who's going to present uh, the evaluation of the effects of Neighborhood Watch in Sweden right after me. But I'm going to talk about the Swedish Neighborhood Watch and how it's organized in Sweden. Because in Sweden it's a little bit different from other EU countries uh, that have financial support from the government, which we in Sweden do not. So how can you then organize Neighborhood Watch without the government behind you? Uh, neighborhood Watch started in 1985 in Sweden, uh, in one little town called Linköping by the Swedish National Police. But it took almost 10 years before it became a method used by the police. In, uh, uh, in the group, uh, as a crime prevention method, method uh, by the police. Uh, in 2010, uh, it was an increased focus on Neighborhood Watch uh, as a result of different evaluations uh, in England and other places. Uh, so, insurance companies in Sweden uh, saw an opportunity to increase the costs of burglary. So, together with the police, uh, they started more intense work together. In 2013, the Swedish Theft Prevention Association, which is the association that I work for, uh, took over the administration of Neighborhood Watch. This means that we do everything that has to do with money, material, uh, science, uh, everything administrational we do, and the police does the work out uh, in the municipalities. It's a two-year assignment. Uh, so we work two years at a time, so we never really know who's going to take over the work with the neighborhood watch. But then on the other side, right now we are the only choice because insurance companies in Sweden cannot uh, do this due to Swedish laws. We are right now looking at different organizational uh, solutions uh, so that it doesn't have to be on a two-year time, so it's more of a continuous work. So our sponsors, it's the six largest uh, insurance companies in Sweden, uh, and also we have co-finers, uh, co-financers, uh, tenant companies, uh, property owners, and other stakeholders as the police and the Swedish National Council for Crime Prevention, which is, which is under the uh, Ministry of Justice in Sweden. The cost of neighborhood watch in Sweden is about 300,000 euros. Uh, this is without the personal cost of the police, because the police does the work uh, in their line operations, but that's not included. It's supposed to be in their normal working time and cost, so it's not on the side of that. Since 2017, when I became the chair uh, of neighborhood watch in Sweden, uh, we have asked the municipalities, which is 290 in Sweden, for support for this organization. And uh, this has given us an extra income that we hadn't had before, uh, since almost 100 uh, municipalities has agreed to help us with the financial. And of course the goal is to have every municipality in Sweden to support us. Today uh, in Sweden we have 10 million inhabitants, uh, about almost 5 million households. We Swedish people like to live alone. And about 1 million households are active in Neighborhood Watch today. So around 25% uh, spread over 30,000 areas. We've seen an enormous increase in Neighborhood Watch these last two, three years. Uh, and we can measure that by the police not having the time to uh, start as many areas as their neighbors want. Uh, they talk to the police when they want to start neighborhood watch and the police doesn't have time to uh, 
to start them. They do eventually, but it can take a month or two before they have the chance to start. And we also see a huge increase in material orders, such as brochures, signs, uh, orders of uh, stickers and, and other things. The media interest for Neighborhood Watch is right now really big. We have an increase uh, with 50% since 2016. And this means around 2,000 articles uh, per year in uh, Swedish media, TV, radio, and papers. Like I said, we have a two-year focus and, uh, at the time, and for 2019 and 20, uh, we, start, we have a new website called Gransamarka, which is the uh, word for neighborhood watch in Swedish. And we also have a focus on apartment buildings. And I also, I'm going to tell you right now, I have material with me that I'm going to leave here, it's in English. Unfortunately, we didn't have it in Italian, even though we have it in 10 different languages. There just aren't enough Italians, unfortunately, that live in Sweden, so we, <laughs> we didn't translate it in Italian. Uh, but that you can uh, pick up if you want to. Uh, and we, the reason we did this uh, for apartment buildings is that many people in Sweden don't think you can have neighborhood watch when you live in apartment buildings, just when you live in, them, in, in houses. Which is not correct. We have even seen, which Peter is going to present later, that it maybe even works better in apartment buildings than in other housing. We, one other reason why we decided to, to do the uh, translation in different uh, languages is that we want to start Neighborhood Watch in more difficult areas with a lot of immigrants. Maybe not to uh, increase the number of burglaries that isn't necessarily the biggest problem in these areas, but to get neighbors closer together. This is uh, the material. We have also started a mobile app. This is to increase the, name, the, the knowledge of uh, Neighborhood Watch, but also for it make it easier for Neighborhood Watch people to communicate with each other, and also for the police to order the material that they need uh, when they start Neighborhood Watch in different cities. I really kept my time. <laughs> yes, so what are the effects of neighborhood watch in Sweden? Uh, we decided we need to find this out because there haven't really been any big evaluations in Sweden before. Uh, so we got money from uh, the National Council for Crime Prevention. As I said, it's under the justice uh, Minister of Justice in Sweden to do a two-year uh, evaluation um, that started really in 2016 uh, in the end of and then took place during 2017 and 2018. And this is what Peter is going to talk about, the results. Thank you. Translation working? Yes, good. Thank you. Yes, it's English. Okay. It's Swedish? <laughs> okay, let's start with the, some slides on the background. Uh, this summer, we have never had so few burglaries in houses in Sweden for a long, long time, as you can see. This is a 10 year period. Uh, this summer, up to August 28th, we had like 2,200. It used to be almost 4,000 seconds, uh, so something big has happened. And if we look at the long term trend from 1975, we can see a steep decrease from well, early 80s down to 2005 or so, and then a rather huge increase in Berkeley. So we have had a, a big discussion on what to do in terms of residential burglaries. And then, and then we also had this, as you can see, in 2018, a significant drop and it continues this year. So, this is one of the backgrounds why we are interested in knowing what is it that are making crimes go down. 
As Linda said, we started the project in 2016, where the Swedish police were reorganized, making 21 separate police authorities into one. I know that the, the Italians, you have quite a lot of police organizations, but we just have one. So we started with having uh, about 2,500 households that were either starting labor watch programs or being a control area. Uh, and we collected official statistics, police reported data, and also made surveys to inhabitants. And this is Sweden. Um, it's a big country with a small population. But we have areas, cities from the north and down to the south. Uh, also in Stockholm, close to uh, Gothenburg and now the bigger cities. So we have quite a large spread. And the signs say that in, in, in single family houses and in multi family houses. So we have sort of a mixture of um, households. And now over to the results. So when we look at burglaries, Two years before we started the programs, and during two years with the program, we see a 36% decrease in uh, households related offenses, that is burglaries uh, and, and things connected with um, crimes committed against the households. We see a decrease also in, in areas where we didn't have a uh, neighbor watch, but at a much lower rate, as you can see. So the net effect is about 28%. So the blue line is neighbor watch areas, and the red one is, is control areas. We also ask people, uh, trying to sort of figure out why is it that, that crime is decreasing more in areas with neighbor watch. And it's about 40 households per neighborhood watch area. And one thing that we saw is that a higher proportion said that they talk with their neighbors on what is happening in their neighborhood in terms of burglaries, car thefts, and problems to a higher extent than in the control area. And that is, of course, one thing that we want people to do take care of each other, talk with each other. This is a boring picture by a criminologist showing that if we compare different methods, increasing the police force, using what is called problem-oriented policing with the analysis of what problems we have, we try to uh, find good methods and do evaluations, etc. as a general method. And we have neighborhood watch, and we have crime hotspots, etc. We will see that neighborhood watch is a very good program actually compared to other ones. It's even better, of course, if you have focused deterrence. That is, if you know the offenders and you sort of pinch them down and try to make them change or be aware that they are going to be caught. But when it comes to burglaries, we don't know. 95% of all cases are not cleared up by the police. We don't know who commits them. So, it's a good method uh, to work with in comparison with other ones. So the conclusions that we make is that, yes, labor watch will actually reduce uh, victimization, but also fear of crime. I haven't shown that figures, but we can see that in areas where we have made labor watch, there's a decrease in, in the fear of crime, uh, and a slight increase in, in other areas. How large the impact is? Well, as I said, 28%, and it's on average what we find in other evaluations that have been done. There was a big one, a big uh, meta-analysis using more than 20 evaluations, but mostly from the, the English-speaking world. Uh, we haven't had one in Sweden or in other Scandinavian countries. And as I said, the, the informal social control people talk with each other, they care about uh, each other, seems to have an impact. But also that we make the police more aware of problems that occur within these neighborhoods. So the method is, is working quite well. What is quite interesting to, to find out now is whether we can keep that impact. And as you saw, we have a huge decrease in burglaries. Uh, that will also, to some extent, change the motivations because if, if the risk is lower than it used to be, then it's, well, why bother? There's a lot of other things. 
So maybe Neighborhood Watch could also extend more to safety issues, to well-being of the citizens, to use the example of the older woman, for instance, in the neighborhood, being helped in, in various ways. So that is the conclusion from the Swedish uh, Thank you. Thank you.